Hi everybody, I'm Stephanie from Residazzle Rabbitry and Yarns, LLC, and by the end of this video, we will be able to figure out seven YouTube or social media content hacks, seven ways to get and figure out content for your social media. So watch all the way through the video, get to number seven, and then you will have everything. So make sure you hit the subscribe, press the bell, that way you get notified when we release all of our videos. So one of the things that I see and hear and have struggled with myself, it's how do you figure out content? How do you figure out uh, to keep producing long-term? So this channel, Razzle Dazzle Rabbitry and Yarns, has over 300 videos just on this channel. We have a podcast that has over 200 uh, pod like audio podcast no video to it we have um, a Facebook account we have a Pinterest account we have uh, Instagram that we don't use much we have Twitter that we don't use too much LinkedIn reddit there's all these social media things and in in this time one of the things that can be a struggle it creatively especially when you're running a business or you're trying to make uh, your own personal brand is how do you keep figuring out content and here are the seven hacks here are the seven things that I use so the first simple thing is what are you doing so what are you doing that day what are you doing in your business what are you doing in in what you do in life so this can be what's called a vlog so like you're videoing or you're um, showing this is the course of a day or this is what I did in a day. So this is one of the most basic things that you can do. And it's literally just saying, here I am today, this is what I'm doing. Because you're doing something every single day. So every single day, or maybe you're not doing something every single day. And that's part of that journey, people, appreciate and want to see part of that journey is okay what is it like what is it really like what can i expect if i'm trying to do what it is that you do so you have the uh the vlog option or what are you doing that day another way that is that i think about this is um, for your business for example if you have a yarny or fiber arts business or a craft business what are you making that day or what is your task that day? Your task might simply be, I've got uh, all these yarns that I have to spin up. Great, you have content. Show how to spin that yarn. Show how you spin that. And there's so much, like when we really stop and we really break everything apart, there's so much to it. So that's number one, the what are you doing, right? Now number two, what do people ask about? Or what do people ask you about? What are the questions that you might get over and over and over? So here's an example. If I have my spinning wheel and I'm at a craft show, people might ask me what happens like when you're spinning your fiber and the yarn breaks. That's a perfect thing. Like if someone has a question, make a video answering that question because the chances are there's other people that want to know the answer to that question. So. People could be asking you, but another great place is maybe you're um, maybe you haven't been out and about recently. But another great place is, for example, if you're in Facebook groups about what it is that you do. So if I'm a spinner, there's an Angora Rabbit spinning Facebook group talking about Angora Rabbit spinning. I can take a look at it and I can see what are questions people are asking, and I can make videos answering those questions. So. You're really answering whatever, you know, whatever it is that you find. So some, so other people, the content is around you and other people, you know, Google owns YouTube. Google is the biggest number one search engine in the world. Then you have YouTube, the number two. So it's so when you answer questions, like it helps you get found. That's my whole point. Number three, what is trending? Okay, so when you're going for views or clicks, right? If this is something that you want your views or your clicks up, what is trending right now in the world? What is going on? You may see um, that it's the holiday season right now. 
So something like uh, how to how to make handmade um, Christmas gifts. That might be something that's trending right now, handmade Christmas gifts. So you could make videos on whatever it is that is trending right now. And that, you know, if you're going for views or clicks in that moment, you'll get views and clicks. Um, there's something else to consider. Is this really a long term? When you think about trending, is this long term? Uh, trending is not usually long tail or long term. So when you make a video, one of the things, for example, on YouTube, when I make a video, one of the things I think about is what is the long tail of this? How long is this video going to live and be clicked on and provide relevant, useful information? When you go to trending, this is one of the downfalls of it, is that a trend is typically short-lived. You get like a whole bunch of muscle right at first, and then it just dies out. Number four. This one is pretty cool. So how to do what you do. It's, this is your instructional, this is your educational how-to videos. So YouTube, there's entertainment and there's how-to. Sometimes when you combine the two, that's like a golden area. So how to do what you do. You can simply show people and instruct and make these instructional videos. This is how you do what I do. And if you break down what you do in a day, you usually do a lot and you can explain there's so many processes and so many things that you can explain to people and it may seem simple i once did a video on how to clean rabbit water bottles and some people are like stephanie why would you why would you do this this is ridiculous nobody needs to know how to clean rabbit water bottles but the thing was there's so many different ways to clean rabbit water bottles and there's so many things involved with cleaning rabbit water bottles do you use bleach or do you do, do you use dish soap is the process the same for both? And what are the benefits? What are the drawbacks for each? There's actually a lot to everything, and you can explain it. Number five, how to not do what you do. So just as important as showing people this is what I do is showing people if you do this, you're not going to do what I do. Like how to fail at doing what I'm doing. And that's just as important because in life, Avoiding the, uh, avoiding the pitfalls, avoiding the traps, avoiding the setbacks is just as important as powering forward and going forward and achieving forward. Because I could explain to people, listen, this is, these are the top five reasons not to spin Angora yarn. Don't do it. These are the top five things. These are going to be the things that if you're, if, you know, here's five reasons to not even do this in the first place. So, and that might, you know, that's helpful for people. People are interested in these things because it also gives the other side of the coin. It also shows the other perspective. So then number six, again, is entertainment. What is entertaining? So anything, you can make a video creatively for entertainment. Now, this is what's cool is that your um, your video program or your app, whatever you're using to edit your videos, this is a great thing for when you're learning how to edit your videos and you're learning how to use your app, whatever it is that you use to fine tune your videos and get it out there. When you're learning how to use it, you can learn, uh, you can use that process of learning and just make entertaining videos. So you can, here's how I use it. I will shoot footage, for example. I might shoot footage of just spinning yarn. And then I go into my video program and I putz around with things and I mess around with things and I look at things and I say, what does this feature do? What does that feature do? And I have a video, I think it's, what if you never started spinning in gore yarn or something like that. And that video is literally just an entertaining video where I putzed around with my video editing program and I changed the, all these different things in the video and I added all these different effects. And I was really learning the video editing program, but I was still able to create a piece of content that I could then release and make my learning experience of the video editing program, I take my learning editing, I take my learning experience and I make it profitable. I make it something that not only have I learned how to use the program, but now I have a finished product, the video, that is 
from using, you know, from learning how to, to use it. And it's just an entertainment piece. It's not like a, a how-to or instructional piece, but it's just something that is, um, that's just made to be visually appealing. So creating something that's entertaining. People like to be entertained. At the end of the day, people like to laugh. Not even at the end of the day. All day, people enjoy laughing. People enjoy feeling good. People enjoy getting... Um, people enjoy getting out of their, their like life with blinders and the life with restrictions and the life with the you must do this, you must do that, you must do this, you must do that. People enjoy being able to stop that and to find something that says, here, like, welcome back. Welcome back to humanity. You know, you're not just a robot who goes and does your job every day and then, um, you know, shut your real thoughts off, shut your true feelings off, do your job, do it this way, you know, don't do it that way. Like, people enjoy clicking out of that and being brought back to uh, things that are human. So entertaining, such as laughing, is one way to do that, and people search for that, and so people find value in videos that offer entertainment. Number seven. So the last one. This is actually one that I think is, I forget about the most, but it's what do you want to watch? When you are searching on YouTube, pay attention, if that's the social media that you're on, pay attention to what you're searching for. What is it you want to see yourself? What, you know, when you stop and you pay attention to what is it that you want? What do you want to click on? Can you find it? Is it there? If it's not there, if you can't find it, then make what you want yourself. And the example I've went back to over and over and over is once upon a time, when I first started out with German Angora rabbits, I looked for how do you shear these? How to shear a German Angora rabbit? How to shear an Angora rabbit? How to get the wool off an Angora rabbit safely and humanely and and still be loved by your rabbit and maintain that relationship with your rabbit. And I wanted to find these videos and it was so, there were pathetically few videos that I found. So I said, okay, that's it. I've got to do this because I know if I'm searching for this, I know there's other people searching for this too. And I started making videos of how to do this. I taught myself, I worked on this, I, I asked others for help and I started figuring out what is the video that I want to see? And I started making those videos. And I think that <laughs> that has, um, you know, that ties into other things. So what do people ask you about, for example, number two? But that's been one of the most helpful things is just doing, what does your heart say? What are you, what are you passionate about? Where is all of that? And so that's really you know, combining your heart and your head. So those are the top seven YouTube content hacks that I have for how do I make content. Uh, some bonus info that I have is that I write down my ideas. So I have a little journal and I may be in a situation where I can't immediately make the video right then and there. I will write down these ideas because you have, if you have an idea, it's so easy for it to just slip away right now because your phone may, you know, your phone may ding, you may get a message, your your laptop may have a pop up that says, "Hey, Facebook, blah blah blah." Like you may, you will get distracted. Your kids might come in, your husband or wife or partner, mate, whatever may come in. Your dog may bark. I have no idea, but write it down. So when you have all these, and when these, when you get answers to these questions, write it down and keep that physical keep that physical list of the content of the videos and go off that list. So that's like a bonus number eight. You really want to write it down. So thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe, press the bell if you haven't already. Every single Saturday and Monday, we've got videos out and we'll see you on our next video.